spices in my latte are trying to kill me. Well, <clears throat> I'm ready. That's how the Let's cookie go. crumbles. <laughs> Welcome to the Northern Knits Podcast. We're two friends in fiber who date craft crochet and talk everything in between. My name is Jocelyn and my co-host is Diana. Diana currently calls Waterloo, Ontario home and I call Winnipeg, Manitoba home. Uh, it's a weekend. It's a Sunday. We're recording. Feels less weird. We're recording at week. our usual time. I know. In the just... usual place. <sighs> Your habits. So comfortable. Feels so good. Feels so good. All right. Well, Diana lets everyone know what we're going to cover this week. I am going to drink some more tea. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, we've got What's in Our Cup, Cool Threads, Woolly Workings, <clears throat> and Wool Gathering. Still somehow want to say Yarn on the Go, even though we haven't really had that segment in like three years. Well, it's because we used to do Yarn on the Go all the time, but now both of us are more cautious with our goings. And for a chunk of almost two years, we weren't going anywhere. No, but the muscle memory to say yarn on the go is still there. Also, you guess anybody's joined us in the last three years. Yarn on the go was the segment where we talked about places we went with our knitting. Which was mostly me because you would take your knitting places and then you'd just talk about what you were doing because you didn't actually knit. Well, yeah. And? <laughs> What's your point? <laughs> In my Nightmare Before Christmas mug, which is actually now in season. It's almost September. And quite frankly, the moment Michaels has Halloween stuff up, as far as I'm concerned, Halloween season has started. So it's been Halloween since like mid-July. <laughs> what? <laughs> sure. My favorite time of year. I am drinking some, for me, terribly, terrifically, tragically... Guys, I'm having some orange peacock titly tea. I grew up drinking orange peacock titly tea, so it hits like all the nostalgia buttons. I'm like having tea with that. my grandma. Now I have way less sugar and milk in my tea now than I did when I was, you know, single digits age. Well, yeah. I'm sure sure single digits don't actually like tea. They like the milk and the sugar. It was all about the milk and the sugar when I was younger. Uh, so I'm uh, enjoying a cup of tea. A cup of tea. Nice. I've been doing the seasonal clean stuff. Ugh. I'm going to be so excited have... like, when the windows are washed and the blinds are washed and the walls are done and everything's had a deep dusting. It will feel so good. But right I now, do that. I've only washed the windows. So like, there's still so much left to do. I'm like, Ugh. one thing a day. One It'll take a day. month and a half, but one thing a day. That's why I'm starting now. <laughs> um, in our Northern Knits podcast banner mug. Ooh, lovely. Uh, pause while we uh, update the store. <laughs> but eventually this will be available again in our merch store. Guys, we're, um, we're I... tidying it up and getting it ready for the Christmas season is what we're doing. So, Yeah. It's when we open up, minute. it'll be some new stuff in there. So, um, But I have a turmeric latte in there. Which is turmeric and other spices. Uh, in a latte. As a pre-mix in hot water is what this is. It's like an instant latte mix. Okay. It's all right. I added a bit of maple syrup and milk. Okay. And uh, I think that improves it. Yeah. the Fancy that. Is... The, uh... Need something. Yeah. They, they really do. <sighs> Which is fine. Not the end of the world. <laughs> I almost had a cool thread. It's still a touch too warm. It's still a touch too warm. So close. You're so close. Uh, guys, it, I'm itching. I'm itching to wear my fingering weight wool things so bad, but I need the temperatures to get below 20 for daytime highs. And we're not there yet. We're still mid-20s. No. We're still mid-20s. But in the evening, I could totally wear my fingering mitts because mitts, it gets down to like 15, 14. I could sit nice. in my living room in a knit and chill. Oh, so good. Summer's almost dead. Summer's almost dead. 
Yes. I uh, so suffered through wearing my stego sweater one more time while it's still way too hot. The but it, the, the Royal Ontario Museum was having a dino night, which is like the after dark adults only. There's alcohol served and you can go do museum things as an adult. Yep. Um, which is great. It was so much busier than I expected. I did not realize there were that many museum nerds. Um, I mean, it's Toronto, so I guess that there would be enough museum nerds. But I was absolutely delighted, A, by how much people, like, dressed up. Like, they they dressed up for this. Good. It wasn't just, like, nerds in their nerdy t-shirts. They like, big, People were dressed up. And the number of obviously delightful nerdy dates that were happening was just so cute. The number of nerdy couples on a date was just, it made me happy. Um, anyway, I suffered through wearing my Stegosaurus sweater one more time. It was way too warm in there. You they realize have... you were out on a nerdy date? Oh yeah, I was. Okay, just checking. But, you know, I'm used to being the weirdo that does museum dates, and I was not the weirdo. It was the norm. I, I got to feel normal. It was nice. Not not during a, a special event like that. Yeah. No. I'm just jealous. I would have loved had LeBron. That would have been so much hadn't fun. Hadn't been to one that size before. It was delightful. Ugh, would 100% so recommend. So I don't... And I met somebody that also had the Stegosaurus purse. Oh, good. So I had a, I had a purse buddy, and I got lots of compliments on the sweater. Good. And then I got to make people's jaws hit the floor when I told them I made it myself, which was also really fun. Perfect. The world needs more knitters. Absolutely. Well, the world needs more crafters. I think we can be more generalized with that. More of us craft it. Yes. That would be good. That would be good. I may have been Googling how to make your own broom this week. And I could. I still think that sounds weird. It does sound weird. It is weird. It's I'm, I'm excited to try. I've never done it before, so it'll be something new, right? And I could source all the things separately and make it cheaper. I'm going to buy a fancy kit. I'm buying a fancy kit. I'm going to save and buy a fancy kit because this is a treat for myself. That is what I'm going to do. I have. I have spoken. (laughs) This is the way. This is the way. Just imagine some medieval peasant, like, you're trying to explain the concept of fancy broom-making kit, and they're just looking at you like, stick? Other sticks, together. Everybody and their dog probably knew how to make brooms. I'm like, it's a fun experiment! Oh, God. (laughs) Lost knowledge, people. Lost knowledge. Okay. I know, I know. I I don't actually know how to make a broom, and it's probably a lot harder than I think it is, so... I feel like I should do a video of it just so that you can watch me attempt. Yes. It. Oh my gosh, you can totally live stream uh, your broom making experiments, okay, and I will watch. I'm sure you will if I remind you. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, keep that in mind. Shall we start in on what we've been working on this week? Yeah, I suppose technically I have five things, but I gave two of them away, so. I made some more dinosaurs this week. Did you get photos? Of course Of course not. (laughs) Didn't get photos. I made two more triceratops. I didn't set up the sign today. Oh, well, we're going to be signless today. But I made made two more of these little triceratops, but with proper safety eyes and a slightly lighter blue um, for the friends that we met up with to go to the dinosaur thing. But of course I didn't get pictures. Um, but I made two more little triceratops this week. Well, ma'am, you just make another triceratop to bring with you when you come to visit me. Uh, yes. There you go. Uh, I only have four things that I can talk about because one of the objects I worked on during the whip spritz was a secret project, so you, you can't know the results of that yet. Same. <laughs> Yes, besides the Triceratops that I don't have to show, uh, I also have four things I can talk about. 
All right. Well, I'll get started. Uh, while we're recording today, I am working on my nightshade. I want to say nightshade society sweater because that's what this yarn was for. It didn't work out. I'm working on my second wood woes sweater. Same designer, guys. I love her sweaters. I love her sweaters. They're so it's dragon horde, right? Good. Dragon horde. Yeah, it's Tristan of Dragon Horde yarns. She's got the cutest designs. Can I, I do, do like all of all of her stuff? No, uh, we don't share the same body type. So not all of her designs are going to look as good on me as they do on her. Which is fine. Not all the things I wear would look good on her, but they look good on me. That is the nature of body types. Indeed. Nothing wrong with it. So I'm continuing my uh, first set of Raglan increases on this Woodwow sweater as we record today. Nothing fancy, guys. I am making it out of the Borg Sock Club colorway from Aaron of Fireweed Fiber Co. Because if you're a longtime listener, you know we love Aaron. Let's see if I can oh, get yeah. this to show up. So there we go. There's enough of it in it now you can see why I was like... I was losing the pattern in the nightshade. Oh, yeah. It's, it's too dark in person for me to be able to pick up the details. Like, I can feel the ribbing. I can't see the ribbing. So, I mm -hmm. am very happy that I decided to shift to a different sweater for this yarn because it's working a lot better and I'm much, I'm much happier. So, am I excited that I had to rip? No, no, I'm not. Ripping is not enjoyable. No, no one enjoys that part. But cathartic. Yes. Yes, it was. Carry on. I'm done. You're up. Oh, I'm up. Okay. Well, I'm going to talk about a quick refinish then. Oops, I neglected to weave in this end. I'm going to do that really quick. Um, we all remember the Red Wing Blackbird socks that we went do. on for way too many months. Um, and then one of them had a solid cuff and one of them had a stripy cuff. And uh, Mr. Diana very nicely asked if I could make them so that the cuffs were the same. So I've made them so the cuffs are the same now. I right. re-knit the cuff on one of them yesterday. So they're the same now. I just have to weave in this end. And uh, then that's that's done. They're They're done again. Again. We love when things are done again. Um, so that's a vanilla sock pattern. I don't remember which heel. I think this is the even heel from Nikki Knits. And the yarn is, of course, Fireweed Fiber Co. in the Red Wing Blackbird colorway sock set. All right. We're never going to hear about those again. Hopefully, maybe, probably. Until I have to repair them. Like you put all those caveats they get worn in a lot. there. <laughs> I mean, maybe I'll just socks. quietly repair Maybe I'll quietly repair them and uh, just not mention them because I'm sure nobody ever wants to hear about these again. That just means he needs more socks. Well, yes. That too. That too? Okay. Oh, I suppose I should put down what I'm working on. But it's it does make it easier to hold up the thing. Guys, I'm working on a new sweater. Watch I'll lose steam and then it won't get done for like a year and a half. Gee, birth. During the whip sprints. And over the course of this week, I put some work in on my she point Edwards mitts. So here's my ball of yarn. Snicker ball of yarn. I even saw the flipping dyer on Friday. Erin came for tea. Do I remember when she told me the name of this colorway was? No, I don't. It isn't what I think it is. Crapzillas. Okay. I literally, I Sorry, literally I can't help asked you. her on Friday when I showed her the mitt. Literally asked her. Oh my god. When I go looking for my DPN later, it's tucked into my ponytail. Okay. I am done the body. Look, it's a whole mitten. Wow. That's that looks a cozy. lot of ribbing, folks. Yes, it Folks, is. It's a lot of ribbing. Now, I made this mitten to pattern size. Did I worry too terribly much that I made it to pattern size? Lord, no. Lord, no. Why not? Because I knew that the cuff at the top was folded. Which meant... I gotta, I gotta stick my thumb through DPNs. 
What about my fist? Always a challenge. Always a challenge. Which meant it didn't matter that the body of the hand was going to be a bit short for my hand. Mm-hmm. I had more than enough ribbing. That's true. Because yep. the ribbing starts here, which is barely, barely at the end of the palm of my hand. I really needed like two more rows. Mm. But that's okay. It's done. So it fits. We're snug, which is how I prefer my fingerless mittens. I like them nice and snuggy. Snuggy, snuggy. And when you fold it, you get this wonderful double thick cuff on the edge. Ah. Which is what I That does look really cozy. It does the same for the thumb, which you can see sticking through these double point needles right now, which is awkwardly, Mm -hmm. awkwardly tight. (laughs) Uh, yeah. It has the added design feature that I picked up the stitches and everything with the mitt facing the right side out, you may notice. So that first round in the pattern, if it asks you to knit, I have a pearl bump. Whatever. I knit inside out and backwards. Uh, but that's fine. For ribbing, it doesn't matter. Ribbing is the same on the inside as it is on the outside. It is. So... I don't care. It just means I have to remember when I do the second mitten to do the same thing. So at least the mittens match. <laughs> However, I made good progress. I mean, it's a mitten. It's not that big, right? And like, obviously it'll relax once I've washed and blocked it, right? But like, just look at that Tweety DK. That's lovely. And it feels I so need to make something with the tweed that I have. Freaking nice. It feels so freaking nice on my skin. I'm so excited. So I don't, I don't know, but I gotta, I gotta argue with the DPNs and get the thumb finished, which will slow me down because I don't enjoy knitting on DPNs. I have DPNs. I will use DPNs when it's necessary. But I'm not a and fan. It can't be that many rows. No, it's like. 16 stitches around a thumb it's not going to take me that long to knit ribbing up the length of a thumb no same rule as the thumb as it is for the hand like you do it to the top of your fingertips so you do it to the top of your thumb so like it won't take that long it'll just feel like it's taking forever because i find dpn's extraordinarily fiddly and completely unnecessary however i do not have a long enough cord on a 3.75 millimeter to do magic loop so mm. I've I've started a list of Christmas gifts, things that Santa or the family could gift me this year. And on it, Smart. I put a forty-inch long, three point seven five millimeter cord. <laughs> so that, like forty inches would be overkill for this. Overkill for the thumb, but if I ever do anything else, like if I ever knit in lace weight, which I also can't see, I would be like down at that needle size. Ah, uh, that's true. So I might as well have the longer cord because, oh no, if you've got extra cord for Magic Loop, it's way better than not having enough. Yeah. So. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's that's how that goes. But I mean, I also put on like some more four millimeter needles because I always need four millimeter needles. They're my most used needle size. And I like the 14 inch smaller ones for arms. So I put on a, a set of those as well onto the Christmas list. Good call. When structure is important or you don't know what you're going to get. And that's always interesting. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go with interesting. That for later. I <laughs> will talk about this pattern that I've been working on. Hey. So this whole amigurumi thing and designing my own amigurumi patterns. I'm with you. This idea floated into my head of, um, you know, those, uh, the, like the resin health potion bottles. Mm. Uh, if you want to be really fancy at your D&D table, you can have like a glass bottle with like the red resin to represent the potion and the dice inside. So when you're rolling your health potion in D&D, you just pop the cork and dump the dice out. Yeah. Critical Role has done it for a while. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't need to take up resin, but what if, what what if I were to crochet? <laughs> so this is the first prototype. Dice come out. And, uh, and dice come out. Good. This is all good. 
And uh, yeah, so I'm now on my third iteration of this thing. So this was the first prototype and it worked pretty well. The second prototype, I tried something and it didn't work. No, that doesn't look so as good. So now I'm, so I did the first one in blue because I didn't have red at the time earlier in the week. And I'm like, okay, well now I have to go get some red. Yes. So that I can make a proper health potion. So I started this yesterday during whip sprints. And this is this is how far I got in 25 minutes while I was trying to chat and count. And I kept having to pull out my rose because I kept counting wrong. Yes. Um, That's okay. You made progress. But I don't it's take all that part. long to make. No. Like this is nearly halfway through the, the colored part of the sphere. Oh, good. <laughs> like the whole thing, it's you make a colored sphere and then you pick up some stitches and do the neck. And then the last row around is some back post double crochet so that you can fold the neck down and get this nice lip on the potion bottle. And then I still have to make a cork for it. Um, but we were talking about it yesterday and somebody was suggesting, because I, I forgot to buy brown, so I can't make a brown cork. And I don't want to go back to Michael's because I need like 10 grams of brown yarn. That yeah, just no. bothers me. So instead, somebody suggested that I just use more white. It's a glass stopper. And then I can use a little bit of some kind of yellow to represent like beeswax. So it's a wax sealed glass stopper. Oh, that would work. And I like this idea. So this one is going to be a red health potion with a glass stopper and a wax seal. And then maybe this pattern idea will finally get out of my head. Maybe. And I will write it up and it'll be an official real pattern. Okay. Like that Sylveon pattern that I'm going to write up and it'll be an official real pattern totally eventually one day. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. This, these are not yeah. words that I have not heard before. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so this is my third potion bottle this week. Okay. Because this idea won't leave me alone. You know, sometimes you know? that's how stuff happens. And you just you have to make it as to, to get, get it out of your out head. Of your head, yeah. Oh, I've been so... there. I've had I've had wild cast on itis where I've just been like, if I don't start this, my brain will drive me up the wall. Just Sometimes you just have to give it. in to the brain. Just do it. But it's it's a very straightforward pattern. Like it it fits on one page, which is good. Minus my notes. I like how you're giving it all away. <laughs> Yeah, well, I have this notion that I might make a video tutorial for it. Oh, right. I forgot about this part. So it'll be available for free anyway. And then I'll have like, you can pay a few dollars for an ad free PDF. Yep. yep. That's the best way to do it. I figured. So that's the plan. I'm making potion bottles where you can actually pop the cork and ro roll dice. And I'm very excited about this. And then you can have mana potions or acid potions or you could even you could ha pass out a mystery potion and just write out what the potion does on a piece of paper and stick that in instead of dice so nobody knows what the potion does till they pop the cork and use it i may i may have been looking at buying a bag of t4 online and making some uh healing potion uh for me to have to hand out when i uh give healing potions out as a cleric so yeah, that's uh, that's a thing that I'm working on. Yeah, for myself. I love it. I am doing a rest row. I'm saying this out loud so I remember what I'm doing. <laughs> I think the neck of this thing will even fit enough dice for a greater healing potion too. If you wanted it to be a greater healing potion, totally doable. Listen, everyone. If it's two, no practice. problem. It might fit four. It definitely won't fit anymore. You'll have to get bigger yarn and. Or make a bigger sphere. I read that, that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's have some fortifying tea. Mm, fortifying tea. That sounds like a good idea. All right. In our opening thumbnail, you may have noticed I was chewing on something. I wasn't chewing on it. This is the current ball of scrap leftover carrot cake cotton and the worsted I'm working on. I don't know the colorway name. I don't know the colorway names of like any of the carrot cakes I'm working in and some of them had ball bands on them. I just don't remember what they are anymore. I made a square and a half yesterday during whip sprints, so I finished the second square. And I haven't done a lot of squares this week, which is fine. One, two, three, six, seven, eight. I've made eight 
I'm down to the last 24 squares. So, like, do two more squares today, then I just need to stack a 14, right? Like, so, like, I'm really close to being done the bulk of the square creation for the bed. For the bed. And over halfway for the pillowcases, because I've got 20 each for the pillowcases already, too. And the pillowcases are only 25. So I'm definitely making some good progress. So I think this week, if the temperatures stay in those low 20s, I'm going to start to put the blanket together again. I've been waiting for the temperature to drop to do more assembly because it's been too hot otherwise. Yeah, so I'm okay. hoping to get some assembly done this week because I would very much like to be at the point where I'm out of the left, I'm out of all of my white yarn so that I can go buy more white yarn for Michael's. Because there's no point in going because I can't estimate if I just need one more big ball or two more big balls till I've done all of my cotton white yarn scraps that I have now. All right. To see how much blanket I've already made. So we're in that in that stage. So hopefully with any luck. I know there's secret crafting this coming week and stuff going on, but I'm hoping to make some more serious progress on the blanket if I can. <clears throat> Because it's fun. Because it is fun. I'm using a 5mm crochet hook. Nothing fancy. I alternate between my two-piece hooking hook and my blue rubber hook, depending on where I'm crocheting the squares, because Phaedra chews on rubber, and I'd rather she chew on this rubber one, not my fancy two-piece hooking rubber. What that so yep. This one lives in the tea serving tray on the kitchen out in out of the living room on the coffee table so but my 2p hooking one lives here <laughs> so when i'm crocheting squares i'm at the computer yeah Oof. so it's oh, safer no, it's stuck it's safer. yes i uh I've, I've been using mine for the amigurumi as well oh yeah because it's so comfortable ergonomic hooks map all the way all the it's way it's great okay well, hey, mine way. is kind of matches one that's yeah, nice so I'm looking, That's I'm looking forward to get getting some more ergonomic hooks if I can. Definitely. I also would like some more. So we'll have to we'll have to take a look and see what they've got for styles and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think. Because I like I have a five things. and a three and a half. And I could really use like a four and That's what I was thinking. I'm doing a, a lot of DK. So I'm like, I've got a five and I got a six. I think I need a four. <laughs> I think I need I a, four a four and a 3.5. So we might have to do an order from two-piece hooking, I think. Unless by some magic they're at the Fiber Festival? If by some magic they're at the Fiber Festival. And honestly, guys, we the Manitoba Fiber Festival, we could go look. The vendor list is up. We could go see if she's going to be there. Have we looked? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. <laughs> but we could. <laughs> Will we? Probably also not. <laughs> Probably also not. Probably also not. Oh Just yeah, I'm going to go to Manitoba in a couple weeks for the Manitoba Fiber <laughs> Festival. Um... We're going to do a girls weekend. Yeah. She promises me she's all mine all weekend long. I know, it's going to be weird. God, it means anime and weird tea and delivery orders of strange foods. Sounds great. And bagels and coffee and... You and know, I get to antagonize your cat. You get to antagonize the cat. Thank God. I need a break from my monster. I will happily take another human for her to pester. Oh no, I'll pester her. I don't think you understand. I will God. pester her to the point where she's coming to you going, Mom, she's annoying. Good. Make her go away. No, I won't. <laughs> having a second person in the apartment is going to feel weird and also delightful <laughs> and I, like, I can get you to help me do things that I have problems with visually that I slow me down I can definitely do that like threading the sewing machine I can just talk yes. you through threading the sewing machine and it'll take you maybe two minutes if it involves winding more bobbins but it takes me an hour which irritates me that I'm so slow at it. There's nothing I can do about it. Mm. Oh, I should set up my Victorian lady. What? I'll give you the chance to see if you would like 
sewing on the on the antique uh singer I have. Oh, I should set her up. That would be fun. I think I should set her up. Okay. I might. I might. I'm looking off screen because she's like right there. I might have to make okay. sure her bobbins and stuff are threaded and let you have some scrap material and you can try treadle sewing. It's going to be bad. It's always bad at first. Mine was horrific. <laughs> My first few ones, I was like, wow, do I even know how to sew? The answer is well, no. Well, I don't know how to sew. And I you only might... kind of know how to treadle. So That's... Treadling for the sewing machine is different from treadling for the spinning wheel. They are two different treadlings. So now, now I'm that I am really both. starting from square zero. Not even square one, square zero. zero. Which is totally fine. She doesn't backstitch. She does. She just sews in a straight line. That's all she does. <laughs> she you know, do one things. thing and do it well. She does one thing and that's what she does well. So be delightful. All right. What's left? Are you up? I have one project left. How are you doing? I have two left. So I think it's my turn. Your turn. Oh, good. It means tea um, or knitting. I started another tiny crochet circle. Uh, this one's going to be a baby hat uh, because a friend is having a little baby very soon and requested one of those dinosaur hats. It's it's just a super basic hat with like spikes and then it like yeah. goes down into the tail with the spikes so you can plop it on the newborn's head and take the little adorable baby pictures. Yes, that's about the length of time it stays on the newborn's head. Unless they're asleep. Well, yes. But when they're asleep, you can do all sorts of mean, mean things to them to make fun of them when they're adults later. Yeah. It's perfect. Anyway, so I'm making um, a very bright green hat. It was... Uh, I was given free reign to do colors. I oh, just request, was requested bright. So the brightest colors that they had that I liked were this bright green, which is apparently jasmine green. This is Loops and Threads Impeccable. It's so not a jasmine green. It's no, so bright. it's like an acid green. Like, I want to use this to make like an acid potion bottle at some point. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then mm. this purple is Grape Punch. And they, it's not showing up quite properly on camera just how glowing purple this is. The grape punch is really intense in person. I have a ball of grape it's, punch. It's like horrible. it almost glows ultraviolet in person. It's extraordinarily purple. <laughs> um, combined with this very, very green, it's going to be very, very bright. And I'm very excited for how this is coming together. Um, I'm just freehanding this. I found a guideline for how big to make newborn hats. And yep. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to freehand it because I think I've been doing this for long enough that I can figure out how to make a hat with some spikes. I hope so. I mean, if not, it'll be gloriously amusing content nonetheless, so I say do it. Uh, that's true. Either way, it'll be good content. <laughs> so I also started that during whip sprints yesterday and did not get very far because I was trying to um, count and talk at the same time, and it was going poorly. It so. really was. It was so good to watch, though. Just put that to the side. I am reasonably fast at crochet, but not when I have to talk. Because it changes the pace of everything that you're doing. It didn't help any that I was counting at the same time, so my brain was trying to keep your numbers separate from Oh yeah, and then chat's helping. Uh, you know. It's uh, it's a good time. It was interesting. It was interesting. I'm gonna go with the words interesting. All right. Cool. I'm down to my last project. All right. Go for but it. I'm knitting. I want to work on my sweater. I know. I'm like, I'm crocheting this thing and I just, I want to do it and oh, not make words. In my air and laid back. Air and laid back. I have some two to time toe up socks going on. Didn't do a lot of work. I did a little bit of knitting while I edited this week. We did a little bit of knitting Well, we did the whip sprints. Nothing super fancy. Did I put a progress keeper in here? I think I did. Oh, I did. I put it on this one. And by a little bit, I mean a little bit. Ooh. No, admittedly, that's bit. across two socks. So. Okay, so that's, I mean, that's not bad. It's not bad. 
Am I going to take my time? Yes. Am I overly worried about it? No. Guys, these are two at a time socks. When I'm done, I'm done the pair of socks. I never feel bad that I don't make a lot of overall visual progress because it's two at a time. Both of these socks are happening at the same time. So this is the, is there coffee in that? There's coffee in that nebula colorway, which is again another Star Trek Sock Club colorway from last year from Aaron of Fireweed Fiberco. And I have it on a long 2.25 millimeter chow goo needle. Got some footsies going on here. I got a while before my feet, my feet are done on these socks, but that's okay. These are going to be shorties. Why? Because I have exactly two pairs of knit shorties, three pairs of knit shorties, uh, which isn't even remotely sufficient. And I'm not going to stop making shorties till I have two weeks worth of knit shorty socks. Because I yeah, love wow. a shorty. I love a short sock. I really thought you had more shorty socks than that. I've had a ton of commercial. Given your love of them. I've had a ton of commercial I've been wearing out. But now um, I'm down to the dredges of the commercial shorties. So like now it has to be make shorty socks to replace the commercial ones that are dying. Because there is no space in my sock drawer to add socks if socks aren't coming out. Mm. So as a sock comes out, a new sock can go in. And I may have bought a commercial sock uh, at Icon this year because it had a wonderful fairy mushroom mm-hmm. pattern on it. And I liked it. So I All did right. Do you have a thing or are we done? Do we I have our one stuff? more thing. You got one more thing? Okay. I got one more thing and I just got to finish the stitch and then I can talk about the thing. Ooh. Okay. Right. Uh, I have been continuing to work on my caged halter top. Hey, look at Which I have now. I have now finished... We had we had some issues yesterday with some running out of some colors, so I've I've had to get a little interesting <laughs> with the colors. I um, like it because the colors that are in the cup extend for a couple of rows, and then I managed to get like one row, like this one little window row of a lighter color, mm-hmm. and then I'm like, wait, no, I wanted to save that to be the contrast color up the neck and the chest so maybe i shouldn't use that so then i had to pull back like i'd done half of the next row so i had to pull that back so that i could reclaim that and then i had to find some different colors anyway it's been a whole color thing which has been delaying progress on this bottom part it's a tail and a half so so now i've (laughs) i've settled on these two colors okay one is a self-striping sock yarn and one is a solid blue that's pretty close to the blue that I've been using that I ran out of. Okay. And so those are going together now into the bottom of this thing. And I just have, I believe I have one more single crochet row and then the there's a row of like shell stitches at the bottom. I have to watch the video again and um, see what I'm supposed to be doing next. But I've done the double crochet parts. Good. And it still gonna make should not cage, be taking right? as long as it is. Yeah. Yes. And then there's still a cage in between all the way up. But we got... We got, we got this part. Bless you. I'm going to do it again. And the color change doesn't even look all that weird. It kind of looks like I did it on purpose. So it's fine. It does look like you did it on purpose, which I really, really like. I also like that there's more than just two triangles. So it's much easier to visualize what it is that you're doing. Yes. It is a halter top. I still need the top part of the halter top. Yep. It looks good. I'm liking that design style. Yeah. So this is a free YouTube tutorial uh, made by Bjax, J-A-X. Um, and if I actually just like sat down and focused on it, I could finish it in an evening. Because if you're really dedicated, you can finish one of these in like six hours. Well, yeah, because it's a halter top. And then I obviously have not been extremely dedicated to this because potion bottles and dinosaur hats and socks and yeah. I should really look at some of her designs and try some out at my size and see how they do. She's got this dress that I, that I really want to make next. Okay. And I just, I'm, I really want to make it. I really want to make it like now. Well, if you start now, when you lose steam, it's fine. You've got time to get it done before next summer. 
Does that well, make sense? I have so many things with deadlines that I need, like the dinosaur hat has a deadline <laughs> and there's okay. some secret knitting that has to be done by next week. And then uh-huh. there's some other secret or knitting that needs to be done soon. And guys, we're doing it at know, in January. So the design process is, is in full steam at this moment. So, you know, things have deadlines and I really can't be taking time out to be doing the other things that I want to do. Because things have deadlines. Did and despite you? that, I'm still taking time out to do potion bottles because it won't leave me alone. Hey, I've been there. Don't worry. I understand. I don't have time to cast on a new Halloween cowl. Guess who wants to just do nothing but cast on a new Halloween cowl? I still want to cast on that amazing cowl, the... The roll and knit. <laughs> Not a roll and write, but a roll and knit. A roll and knit, yep. I really want to do that. Maybe that'll be my fall cast on, the fall equinox. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a good way to sneak it in there. Mm-hmm. Maybe I should do the same with that cycling sweater. That's the plan. I And a cowl is, like, easy. <laughs> well, it's small. The cycling sweater is not small or easy, but I want it. Yeah, that's what I should do. Think. Okay, decision okay. made. All right. Well, yep. I'm out of projects, and you're out of projects. I'm out of projects now. Oh, so I should go look up a word so you can do a Patreon ad. All right. What's my word? What weird word do I need to work into this today? Let me look. Let's see what the phone says. Oh. Oh, nose. having such a sleepy day and i really need to like go outside and walk around to reset the circadian rhythm so it's like it got slightly dark outside and it's warm and you're knitting and it's it's sleep time like no no it's the middle of the afternoon it's not sleep time oh this one's easy luxury luxury okay by the way, my phone's out of a case because I went for a dip in the tub this morning and the tub had water. Oh, no. There was some stress this morning when I was dismantling things and draining things. Is it the phone's okay? Fine. The phone's fine. Okay. I got it out in time, but I've taken it out of the case so that the case can fully dry and the phone can fully dry. And I propped it up so like if by some weird chance in that split second between, oh, my God, it's in the water and it was out of the water. Thank God, water is clear. My phone's dark. That was easy for me to spot. Um, it water would drain out, but like I also like I I keep some stale rice because rice will go stale in a Ziploc bag, and the bag is labeled "in case of phone in water situ- emergency," and it sits with my emergency kit stuff, so I know where it is. So if I had to, I could have put it in the bag of rice because it'll the rice will pull water out. So, like, I have backups, but I didn't need to use it. I didn't even get the, hey, we might have water in here warning. Phones give a water warning? They will, yes. I have, this is not the first phone I have accidentally dropped in water. It will not be the last phone I I accidentally drop in water. have not dropped a phone in water, honestly. Don't do it. Stressful. You feel like you're aging right before your very eyes. (sighs) I feel like I've got my fancy phone. I really don't want to drop that in the water. It's years off my life fancy phone like my fancy phone i love your fancy phone i like my fancy phone i like my phone just fine so so great for reading knitting charts which is why i wanted it just such as i know like the more silly reason to want an expensive phone i'm happy with the google pixel and i'm learning it that's fine but i think i may honestly save up so i can get a fold phone next time it's pretty nice yeah but you know me, it takes me two years to, to, I have been debating on what new tablet to buy to replace my current tablet for three years, because I can't make up my mind. Well, now you've got a whole slew of new options. I do, which is not going to help me any. Not going to help me. All right. You have your word? Shall we begin? Luxury. Yeah. Yes. If for some reason you would like to financially support these shenanigans, you may do so at patreon.com slash northern its podcast. Any level of support gets you access to our patron only discord server where we are active at all hours of the day and the night talking about luxurious yarns and theoretical knitting and sharing patterns and 
It's luxurious count. Luxury, luxurious. Close, close enough. I mean, I'll give it to you. Okay, we'll see what the we'll we'll see what the internet says. <laughs> we talk about many things on the Discord server. It's a good time. Um, at the higher tiers of support, we also do a monthly e knit in. We did ours for this month recently, so our next one is going to be in September. As I scan through my show notes and try to remember what date that was. Second last Saturday in September. It's the second last Saturday. That's the 23rd of September. Saturday, the 23rd of September at noon Manitoba time. We hang out on Zoom for like four hours. Yep. And knit and chat. and Yeah, it's good. I like yeah. being able to see everybody else's projects. Like, oh, I love, I love a good whip parade from everybody else. I'm always so excited to see what they've been working on. Like, not just hear about it, but like see it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so good. So good. I love it so much. As always, we super understand that budgets are a real life thing, you guys. If you can't financially support liking, subscribing, commenting here on YouTube, as well as other social media platforms, is a great way to interact with us. You can show us pictures of what you're working on. Equally as good. Equally as good. You can share cat reels with me. I love a good cat reel. I also love a good cat reel. Uh, Dog reels, also acceptable. Oh. Did I send you the last one that I... No, I think I sent it to the to the Google Foo Master. I don't know if I sent you the last cat reel I saw. I will check, and if I have not, I will send it to you, because oh, I send okay. you ones I don't send other people, because you know my sense of humor very well. Not not mm-hmm. everybody does. Not, not everybody <laughs> does. Not suitable for all audiences? Not suitable. I am not suitable for all audiences, and I am I am aware of this. There's some things I only send my mother, because even you won't get it. But my mom Ooh, will. Okay. <laughs> That's getting way Fair. out there. <laughs> Fair. Uh, hopefully you enjoy the bonus content that we put out. I know we just did a live whip sprint update for everybody on Monday. So that was weird because we usually do the whip updates as records. So that's that'll be our first for us in the future. We're doing it tomorrow, but you guys will have already seen it because it was posted on Monday. So yeah, it's weird to talk of past tense about a thing that hasn't happened yet. Everybody wonders why I have problems with tenses. Uh, here you go. Uh, future versus past. Befuddle the brain. Otherwise, the only big things we got coming up our next month we start our fall equinox craft with us which means the summer solstice craft with us is almost wrapped up so hopefully you guys have got your projects all finished which is good i epically bombed mine the pattern wasn't mine. going to work with my uh, visual requirements so we have to try something else it's fine i don't mind i won't know till i try and i'm quite content to try to see if it works so we have that coming up what else do we got coming up Ooh, the craft off next weekend we're live on sunday so this friday and right. this saturday you will see posts on instagram and here on youtube where the poll where you guys can vote on what secret project we'll be working on next month and you can find out how well we did with our projects this month i had the mallow cardigan this month what was your secret project this month my secret project this month was the contours mitts fingerless oh, mitts with the uh, cables god. all the way down oh god i hope you got those done okay which case we'll find out We'll find out. So I look forward to seeing everybody on Sunday. Do you have anything else we need to cover? Did I forget anything? I don't have show notes. I just have my memory. <laughs> oh, when are you next live with Louise? That'll actually be not this coming Thursday, so like not tomorrow, but next Thursday. So it'll be the first Thursday of the month, which is, I don't know if Sunday's the third. Uh, seventh. Okay. I have written down. Seventh. The seventh of September. That'll be, that'll be my next live. You'll be in town you fly oh, in on weird. wednesday yeah. yeah yeah i'll be there you'll be oh there. weird I know. you can watch from the, you can watch from the youtube in just... the living room <laughs> <laughs> i'll just i'll just yell from the living room i have comments <laughs> she, 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 she just pops in she's like okay hang on and then she leaves again it'll be like that was a random drive by diana <laughs> <laughs> all right you guys until next week i'm gonna say i'm jocelyn and I'm Diana. I don't know where your week takes you. Don't forget to knit. Don't forget to knit.